And so it, it to me, it's, it's, it's just interesting how 10 years after the fact, after Milosevic has fallen, that this is still um, an issue for the Italian government. Uh, you mentioned period 2002. Uh, you were one of the first diplomats who mentioned that in case of referendum, majority should be 55%. Correct. Uh, there are a lot of Montenegrins who supported the idea of independence who do not understand right now while we sit and talk why was that majority and not 50% plus one vote. So the question for you is how to explain to our citizen at first, at first place that kind of majority. Yes. And second question is how did uh, Montenegrin politicians both position and opposition reacted to that kind of your suggestion? Well, I originally thought of this 55% because when I came down and I talked to all the political parties in Montenegro, I, I could see that, that there were huge differences, uh, huge emotional differences. There was, there was real uh, anger, mistrust, hatred uh, between these parties. And on the question of independence, there was a real division. Um, and then further talking to the opposition parties, their classic, classic complaint was that the Djukanovic government, by being in power, had the ability to influence votes, could unfairly use uh, the advantage of perhaps the media, uh, funding that it had uh, in a number of ways, to have an unfair advantage. And I thought, well, how to overcome this advantage? And I thought, well, if, if you make it 55% rather than just 50, that's a gap of 10%, 55 versus 45. That's a sufficient gap to overcome this feeling on the part of the opposition that there was uh, an unfair bias in favor of the, the government on this question. That's how 55% came into being. Uh, in a book, uh, you mentioned that after gaining independence again, uh, our Prime Minister has two main goals. It is membership in the European Union and membership in the NATO alliance. Correct. Do you believe that he is capable enough, because previously we have mentioned his abilities and capabilities, that he is strong enough and able enough to provide strong support in favor of both the EU membership and the NATO membership, especially the second one, because the last researches show that there are only something above 30% of Montenegrins who support the idea of Montenegro being a member state of NATO alliance. Well, I, I think, first of all, it's a little early to come to any conclusions on that because the membership process, as you know, takes quite a while. And as I understand it, uh, optimistically, you're looking at, say, three years or so before you'd be full members. Uh, in any case, the time for these questions would be far closer to the date when membership was around the corner, or perhaps when you actually had received an invitation to join, and then you can make a decision on how to proceed. So there is some time to go before that, that happens and events can play out. I, I uh, would say, as a strong supporter of NATO, that it is absolutely essential that uh, every country that becomes a member of NATO shares its values and its responsibilities. And so uh, the question for me is, will Montenegro be willing to share those values and responsibilities if, in fact, it turned out that, that uh, a large number of, of Montenegrins were against membership in NATO, then it, candidly I would say that we would not want Montenegro as a that, member because it, it's a cohesive alliance on many questions as you, as you might know. It requires a unanimous vote for something to happen, which means that Montenegro could stop a lot of actions of the NATO alliance if it were a member. So we want to have people who share our philosophy. But if you talk to an average Montenegrin, 
he would tell you that in this phase of negotiations with NATO alliance, it is job that is done. That nobody will ask them whether they want or do not want membership in NATO alliance. Why do you think that's so? Is, uh, uh, or better, to form the formulate the question is, is there any way back from this phase of negotiations? Well, I don't think it, it, there has to be a way back because the negotiations are proceeding, the talks are proceeding, but, but as I said, you are still a ways before getting a formal application uh, or, or invitation to join. So this, this process is a work in progress. It's by no means complete. It's not like a deal's been reached and, and Can now we exit the, the process? Of if course. Of Montenegrians course you, wish, wish of, it is that of, way? Of course you can, it, because uh, you haven't even been invited yet. And when you are invited... But I told you, if you ask an average Montenegrin uh, what is supposed to happen in next year or two, we will become a member state of NATO without asking anyone. So no, that well, is the reason why I ask you this well, question. Well, for, first of all, let me, let me say that, that on the question of a referendum, either for the European Union or for NATO, the experience varies from country to country. The United States, for example, never had a referendum on joining NATO. Um, the recent uh, European Union treaty, um, almost uh, no countries had a referendum on, on whether to pass a treaty or not, even though there was a lot of public opposition in a lot of countries to it. So uh, other countries, such as Spain, when they joined NATO, a referendum was an important part of the process. So every country is different. You'll have to decide for yourselves on, on it. But what I would say is my expectation is that there will probably be another round of parliamentary elections before you actually have a, uh, an invitation to join NATO, and perhaps that will be an opportunity for citizens to make their views felt. And do you have any kind of advice for our government regarding the strategy of gaining supporters uh, of, uh, or, or those one who, who, who oppose it regarding the NATO membership? What would be your main advice to well, our government? Well, well the, the question that the Montenegrins would have is what's in it for us? Why do we want to join this organization? What are the benefits? Um, and I think what your government just needs to do is to be more forthright and, and clear in explaining not only the benefits, but also the obligations, and then people can make an informed choice because there are both. There are benefits, there are obligations. From my point of view, um, uh, one of the things that I see all the time when I'm in the Balkans or here all the time is the feeling here, you, you asked before about the, the different mindsets and what has to be changed. There's a real feeling in, in this region that uh, we're helpless. The big powers decide everything. NATO and the European Union are two ways to ensure that the Montenegrin people have a real say in their future and that their future is not going to be decided by others. It'll be decided in, in concert with them in organizations like NATO and the EU. And, and for my mind, that's the, the real reason why Montenegrins should want to join NATO.